Yo, if you like roller coasters and amusement parks, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell because I upload new videos just like this one every single week. Also, comment down below because I respond to every comment that I see. Anyways, enjoy the video. Peace. Oh, ow, bad idea. What is up, Thrill Seekers? Today, I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite roller coasters in the state of Florida. Now, the state of Florida is just such a big hub for theme park lovers, really around the world. Um, it has great kind of family parks like Disney or um, Universal Studios, um, as well as super great thrill parks um, like Busch Gardens Tampa, SeaWorld Orlando, and arguably, um, arguably Universal Studios as well. Um, but something to keep in mind while I'm going throughout these video, this video, I am only including actual roller coasters on this list. So something like Rise of the Rise of the Resistance. I actually prefer it over all of these coasters, but it's not making the list because it's not a roller coaster. And also, only including roller coasters that I've ridden. So, Iron Gwazi isn't going to be here. But anyways, at number 11, it's an honorable mention. It is one of Disney's bolder attractions, and that's because it is rock in roller coaster. Um, this coaster is themed to Aerosmith, um, which I actually thought was a group that, like, made arrows, like a locksmith, but for arrows. Um, so of course you would imagine my disappointment when I actually got into the queue line of the ride. Um, but nevertheless, still a great roller coaster. The launch is super forceful. Um, I believe it's 0 to 57 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds, um, which is uh, pretty fast, especially compared to something like even Poltergeist, which doesn't even have um, that forceful of a launch. Um, this coaster is made by Vacoma, so you will have a little bit of shakiness on the ride, but it's not really as rough as I actually thought it would be. Um, this coaster does have three inversions, and all of them are super fun. The flipping sensation, especially in the dark, um, is just such a fun sensation, I guess you could say. Um, and then, of course, the thing that really makes the ride is the theming, both on the building, in the queue line, and of course, on the coaster as well. Um, rock this way, blast through the entire ride. It's just a great ride, especially coming from Disney. Anyways, at number 10 is an incredible coaster. That's because it's the Incredible Hulk coaster. Haha. <laughs> oh, sorry, what's that? Yeah, yeah, kill myself? Okay, yeah, that's that's fair. Anyways, this ride is so, so, so awesome. I absolutely love the Incredible Hulk coaster. It's just such a great ride. Um, some could even say it's an incredible ride. Um, the first half of the ride is super, super awesome. Um, I absolutely love it. It's super spread out, super graceful, super smooth, um, and overall just a great first half, one of the best first halves. Um, until it kind of starts to get into the second half, kind of starting out with a um, with a corkscrew, which you're gonna see here just in a couple seconds right here, that's when the ride starts getting not very great. Um, the, the coaster really Hulk smashes you into the side of the restraint, which is not very good. Of course, Hulk smashes are usually super awesome, but there aren't there are definitely situations where they don't really work very well. I tried one on my girlfriend, didn't really work very well. Um, and this is another situation where it doesn't really work. Um, and that part is kind of painful, but it is still a great ride. Still definitely deserves a spot on this list. But that kind of ending is why it's not higher on the list for me. Um, it's a B&M sit-down coaster. I think my second one that I rode, because I rode Kumba before it. Um, but still a unique coaster. There's very little B&M sit-down coasters. And yeah, that's the Incredible Hulk coaster. Anyways, now at number nine is Kumba at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Or sorry, Busch Gardens Tampa. Um... <laughs> And this is a, another B&M sit-down coaster, the only other that I have ridden. Um, now, this coaster gets a lot of mixed reviews because some people really praise it for its intense ride experience and it's very whippy, um, but others 
definitely put it on some of their worst coasters lists just because of how, I guess, rough the coaster is. Um, I wouldn't say that it's super rough, but it definitely does have a bad rattle, um, which I'm not a big fan of. I actually, first of all, I do like more graceful rides versus super intense rides. Um, and also the rattle definitely did take away from it. But nevertheless, this coaster is still super awesome. All of the inversions are super fun. Um, there are definitely a lot of graceful sections and yeah, definitely a must ride if you go to Busch Gardens Tampa Bay and one of the reasons why you should take the trip there. Anyways, now coming in at number eight is, here we go, a Kraken um, at SeaWorld Orlando, which is a B&M floorless coaster. Yes, yet another B&M on the list. Um, there are quite a few, um, but Kraken is definitely an amazing coaster. Um, I absolutely love this ride. Similarly to Kumba, um, it's not the smoothest coaster in the world, um, for sure. Uh, there isn't quite as much of a rattle as Kumba, but there definitely is a noticeable rattle on it, which does take away from the experience just a little bit. Um, and also similarly to Kumba, I do still prefer, of course, graceful rides, like I said earlier. Um, and this ride is a lot more intense. Um, that's why I prefer other B&M floorless coasters like Superman Krypton Coaster or even Rougarou um, over this coaster just because they're more graceful, they're more smooth. Um, but still though, this, this ride is still amazing. All of the inversions are super fun. Absolutely love it. Um, and definitely one of the main reasons that you should go on out to um, SeaWorld Orlando. Oh, look, cards. Um, we have number seven, which is another B&M. Whoa. Um, this is Montu, which is a B&M hanging coaster. Um, or what was it? A dangling coaster, according to a lot of accounts that are making like top 10 scariest coasters, right? It's a, it's a dangling coaster. That's what it is. Um, no, it's a B&M invert and one of the best B&M inverts for sure. I actually do prefer Silver Bullet over it. Um, pretty much for the same reasons why the other coasters previously on this list aren't higher up. And that's just because I prefer more graceful rides and Kumba is definitely a very intense ride experience. Um, but if you do like intense rides, this is definitely for you. It has seven inversions, all of them super whippy, super snappy, um, super fun. And overall, it's just such a great ride. Definitely, again, another great reason to get out to Busch Gardens Tampa, um, really to ride this coaster and experience it for yourself. So yeah, that is Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. Now coming in at number six is, what is this? Oh, it's the first and only wooden coaster on this list. Oh, yeah. Um, this is Mine Blower at uh, Fun Spot Kiss Me. Um, no, it's Fun Spot Kiss Me. Um, and this ride is super, super, super fun. Um, I wouldn't say it blew my mind, but I would definitely say that it did definitely blow my mind, um, which is always something that I definitely look for in a coaster, is a coaster that can blow my mind, you know? Um, everyone wants that. But this is another POV by me, A. Um, and yeah, overall, this coaster is just such a great ride. Um, it's super crazy. Um, the airtime is mostly very sustained, which is something that I like. The first drop, 100%, one of the best first drops um, on any coaster. Even in the front row, which is something that not a lot of coasters have, is a great drop in the front row. Um, this, this coaster, Mind Blower, definitely does have it. And in the back row, it's even better. Um, but yeah, getting back to the airtime throughout the ride, um, it's super sustained ejector airtime on most of the parts, um, but there are a lot of floater moments as well. Um, so it's a great mix of, you know, sustained ejector and sustained floater airtime, which is definitely something that I love. Overall, a great ride. Um, definitely worth just visiting Fun Spot just for a half a day. Um, anyways, now coming in at number five is another B&M. 
yeah, they, yo, that B&M girl where she was like, should have gotten a B&M, Florida was like, be okay. I'm going to install like 100 of those because this is a B&M dive coaster and that is Shikra at Busch Gardens, Tampa. Um, Shikra is well, definitely a lot of people probably are looking at this and being like, what? How is it this high up on the list? Um, I definitely look for airtime in a coaster and Shikra gives amazing airtime. Um, first of all, it does hang you over the drop, which is why it's called a B&M dive coaster. Um, that's like kind of what the model does. Um, but I actually prefer it in the back row, which is kind of crazy, but I do just because it really flings you over that first drop as well as the f drop off of the mid course break run. Um, you get amazing airtime. Um, and the rest of the ride, super buttery smooth. The elements are really graceful, really fun. Um, and overall, it's just such a great coaster. I don't really get why people hate on B&M dive coasters. I absolutely love them. Um, obviously, this isn't my favorite. I like uh, Griffin more, but still a great ride. Now coming in at number four is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Oh yes, they, they definitely did take inspiration from some Six Flags rides when coming up with this name just because of how long it is. Um, I mean, you have rides like Gotham City Gauntlet Escape from Markham Asylum, which is absolutely crazy. But anyways... Yeah, Hagrid's is a great ride. Super long ride, so I can talk about it for a while. Oh, yes. Um, it is, in terms of the ride experience, it's awesome. Um, it has seven LSM launches, which is, I believe, more than any other coaster in the world, um, which is super crazy. None of them are particularly forceful, um, but all of them, definitely you can feel the acceleration going into them. Um, which is definitely something that I, I like. Um, overall, the ride is pretty tame at most points, um, but it does definitely have some more whippy and intense moments um, just kind of here and there. In terms of the theming on the ride, um, it's insane. I mean, they planted, I believe, over a hundred trees just to make it really feel like you were in a forest, maybe even a thousand trees to make it seem like you're in the Forbidden Forest, which is kind of what this theme, uh, what this coaster is themed to. Um, but kind of getting back to the ride experience, just because it's on the screen right now, I do want to talk about the technology of this coaster. First of all, it uses a high-speed switch track, like you saw there when it went up the spike and went backwards. Um, and that is definitely new technology that Intamin has come out with, where they can switch the track while the train is still moving. Um, and just in a second, you're going to be kind of caught by Devil's Snare, I believe is what it's called. Um, and there's a drop track. So the whole coaster as well as the track just drops vertically down, which is super cool um, before you go on the fastest and final launch. Um, but yeah, the theming is insane, um, both throughout the coaster as well as throughout the queue line. I did wait a long time for this. I believe it was like four and a half hours, which is crazy. Um, but it was... Was it worth it? Yeah. But um, but at least the queue line did have a lot of amazing theming. So yeah, one of the most well-themed coasters. Um, if you have read any of the Harry Potter books or the movies, which I haven't, but if you have, um, then you'll probably even appreciate it even more. Um, but it does still deserve a number four spot just because of the overall experience um, just being so awesome. Now coming in at number three is definitely more of a thrill coaster and that is manta at sea world orlando oh yes um manta is a b&m flying coaster um one of only two that i've been on the other one being uh tatsu at six flags <laughs> jig mountain i'm laughing because i was having a lot of fun when writing the pov names um i was like it's by me woo um, but 
yeah, this ghost here is great. Um, definitely not quite as good as Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain, but it was surprisingly close. I actually definitely did underestimate this ride until I rode it. Um, something that I love is just how it really does have a great mix between um, ejector, or no, what? Between um, graceful moments and intense moments. Right there, you saw the pretzel loop. That's definitely um, a more intense moment. It doesn't, it doesn't have ejector airtime. <laughs> what was I saying there? Um, but yeah, um, and then sometimes it kind of flies over. Um, some of those rolls are a lot more graceful. Um, this kind of flyby, it's gonna go um, down next to some water and there's a nice water effect that's super graceful which I like um, but there are obviously a lot of intense moments as well and that's one of the reasons why I love this coaster is because it really does a great job at combining an intense ride experience and a graceful ride experience and putting them together um, overall it's just such a great ride. I mean, super unique, especially with the flying aspect of it. And I really do wish that there were more of these out there. Um, but now coming in at number two is a ride that people would think would be at the number one spot. And that is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. You can see my reverse POV there. Um, again, check out my reverse POV, or sorry, my POV playlist. Oh, yes. Um, but anyways, uh, Mako is just such a great ride. It's a B&M hyper coaster, which means that it does exceed 200 feet. It is 205 feet tall, which I believe is the tallest coaster in all of Florida. Um, of course, that is until Iron Gwazi opens, which is 206 feet. Hee <laughs> hee, get wrecked, Mako. We got one foot on you. Um, but... Anyways, the floater airtime on this coaster is insane. I absolutely love sustained airtime, and this coaster does not disappoint with its sustained airtime. Um, there's just so much amazing airtime on this ride. Um, I actually do prefer Apollo's Chariot just slightly over this coaster, um, just because Apollo's Chariot did give me more of that kind of weightless stomach feeling. Um, one that I love so much, um, and you would know that if I, if you have seen any of the other ranking videos that I've done. Um, but yeah, overall, still, Mako is such a great coaster, definitely the best at SeaWorld Orlando, um, and just such a great ride. And now, at the number one spot, dun dun dun, it is Cheetah Hunt, which is, of course, my favorite roller coaster in Florida. A lot of people don't really give this ride justice, I feel like. A lot of people put it maybe top five in Florida, but even that, a lot of people don't even put this top five, which is crazy. Like, what are you doing? Um, this ride is great. All of the launches are super forceful. Um, all of the airtime is super awesome. That's one of the reasons why I love this coaster is just because it's so graceful um, with so much airtime and it's just amazing. Um, all of the uh, launches, like I said, super forceful and it's just so great. Um, it is a Intamin Blitz coaster, um, which is... An another Intamin Blitz coaster is Maverick at Cedar Point, which I actually don't really like as much. I actually have Maverick at number four in the park. Um, but the reason why I don't like Maverick as much as many people do, and I like this ride more um, than a lot of people do, is just because this ride is super graceful. Um, it focuses on airtime and kind of just a smooth, graceful ride experience, um, which is definitely something that I love. Um, versus Maverick, which definitely focuses on more of an intense ride experience, which I don't like quite as much. Um, but yeah, amazing airtime on this coaster, which I wasn't expecting at all. I was expecting to get off this coaster and be like, okay, that was that was fun. Um, but I, I got off this coaster amazed, and that's awesome. Um, but yeah, that's really my ranking video. So Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. And like I said at the beginning of the video before the intro, make sure that you subscribe because I upload new videos just like this one every single week. Um, now, these videos are going to kind of act as... Um, kind of a break for me, I guess, in a way. Um, just when I'm, you know, planning something super, super big, um, then I will use these ranking videos to kind of take a break because 
it's uh, it's it's a lot easier to make than a lot of my normal videos. Um, but of course, check out my POVs playlist. I already said that a whole bunch of times throughout this video. Um, but I have really good POVs as well as reverse POVs, like for example this one of. Um, Cobra's Curse, that's what it's called, at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay. Um, and yeah, anyways, that's really it for this video. So thanks for watching, and yeah, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out. <laughs>